Hello, I am the Irish guy, and right, so Premier League game week 27 predictions. Let's go. And thankfully, after a string of weeks where I was getting every single scoreline wrong, I got two right last week. Get in! And I also had to eat a bowl full of flowers. I'm still coughing up roses every time I brush my teeth. But go on then, you know the drill. If I don't get at least one correct scoreline this weekend, then I will stuff four cans of dog food, three pints of milk, nine squash bananas, and a cup of shampoo into a Cocoa Puff box, and pour that horrible stir for concoction over my head. Oh yes, and, and don't worry, the couch forfeit is coming soon. My knee still hurt, okay? Right, let's go. Brentford nil, Chelsea won. Chelsea's record against Brentford is pitiful beyond belief. They thought losing 4-1 home to the Bees in April 2022 was bad. Just some dreadful freak afternoon in a battle of the Thomases. I mean, sure, something was definitely weird in the Chelsea coffee that day. It's fine. It happens. Move on. Chelsea also lost 5-2 at home to West Brom. It's a once-in-a-lifetime freak. Surely Chelsea would just go back to squashing the Bees, turning them into yellow sludgy soup. No. What if someone told you that Chelsea would fail to score against Brentford in their next three meetings? That they would lose 2-0 to them at Stamford Bridge twice in a row? There's banners of Frank Lampard all around Stamford Bridge, but there's only one Frank who's making West London a spiritual home, and that's the one who looks like Gollum midway through a sneeze. But I do think that Chelsea will want a reaction to being questioned by Gary Neville on the telly. And yeah, I think this will be a busy, committed Blues performance. Conor Gallagher with the second half strike, an important 1-0 win. I mean, it helps that the Bees are an absolute rotten, horrible red Allegation form. Ivan Tony's return was supposed to save the club. Now, nah, they've lost the last three games, conceding nine goals. Tony is supposed to be their Superman, but it's a bit like Superman just casually watching aliens invade his town, whilst he's just helplessly eating donuts on the couch. Honestly, that's If Brentford do beat Chelsea this Saturday, then I will eat a cheese omelette off a stranger's head. Everton 2, West Ham 1. Everton have four points back. Everybody dance. Uh, you know what that means? Because the Toffees got their points deduction reduced, it means they are now sitting pretty in a comfy 15th position in the league. Five points above the drop zone. They're not dipping back into the sweaty relegation zone this season. This is absolutely beautiful. No more milk. But this is also annoying. Because if Everton have won back their four points on appeal, then this means that the FA were wrong to deduct them the full 10 points in the first place. Do you know how many times I've had to dunk milk on my face because the Toffees were just in the relegation zone? Lower down in the league by Luton by just a point. Oh, it's all hunky-dory now because Everton have their points back. No harm, no foul. Sorry. No, there is harm and there is foul. I, I got chicken run two on in the corner. It's a terrible film, but I mean, are you going to reimburse me for the milk? Are you going to stop the barber from repeatedly telling me that my hair smells like a stinky cup of tea? Those extra milk showers were literally for nothing because the Toffees don't deserve to be in the relegation zone. I'm furious beyond belief. But yeah, good as a bark will be absolutely balancing to have their points back. So I am sorry, David Moyes, but this is going to be another ugly return to this ground. Jared Bowen will score for the Hammers, yes. But now, goals from James Garner and Dwight McNeil. 2 1, Everton win. No more milk. Fulham won Brighton 1. This seems like a pretty safe pick. I've played it safe a couple of times this season, saying that Brighton would draw 1 1, and it's paid off both times. Even as recently as last week, yes, Fulham versus Brighton is usually a pretty drab, nothing match. So yeah, I'll go for a 1 1 draw. Danny Welbeck and Rodrigo Muniz with the goals. Just an extremely dull match. Honestly, lads, if this game is in the first three matches shown a match of the day, then I will swallow a glass of truly expired, gone off milk. Oh, won't that be revolting? Newcastle 2 Wolves 1. Historically, Newcastle versus Wolves was always the 1-1 one -one match. It's happened so many times between these clubs. Steve Bruce managed to find the four 1-1 one -one draws against Wolves in a row. But to be fair, when Mickey Almiron smacked me the late winner a year ago, he broke the 1-1 one -one trend between these teams. And so I'm going to go for a similar thing. A 2-1 win. Yes, the Magpies are going through a sticky patch, but come on. I have to tip Eddie Howe to outwit Gary O'Neill at home. There are very few quality English managers, but make no mistake about it. Howe is definitely one. O'Neill is just the next Tim Sherwood. It's just nobody has realized that, yes, Newcastle just had their season ended on Wednesday night. And they weren't even playing. Their dramatic penalty shootout win at Goodison Park lit a fire in the Geordies. They were now just one game away from a return to Wembley. Surely they could be given a nice, easy home draw in the quarterfinals with someone like Coventry or Leicester. No. Instead, they get drawn against Manchester City away. Oh. 
Well, that, that's it then. You've just been given a trip to the best football team on the planet. When this draw was made, you could hear an audible groan on Tyneside, as if MTV had just announced another season of Bloody Jordy Shore, but I will still tip them to win here. It'll be a tight, scrappy game, but Huang Yi Chan will score from Wolves, but Alexander Izak will bag in the second half double. 2-1, Newcastle win. And let's make a deal. If only you could somehow prove me wrong and pull off a win over how, then I will eat a mud sandwich. Nottingham Forest nil Liverpool won. It would take a sickeningly brave and almost delusional man to bet against Liverpool right now. Their team is so on fire at the minute that even their little children are scoring goals. You know, the ones who three months ago were probably dressed up as vampires asking their neighbours for sweets. I mean, Jaden Dance at the double in the FA Cup. I didn't even know he existed two weeks ago. What is going on? What is in the water on Merseyside right now? A sprinkling of Batman's DNA? Look, I know the Reds lost on the last trip to Forest, but there's absolutely zero danger of that happening here. I think Nuno Santo is taking Forest down. They're getting relegated in my eyes, and so yeah. Sure, it'll be a tight, gritty match, and if it got Rigi, we'll spend the entire match winking at the away fans from the bench, but no chance that Liverpool lose. 1-0, Darwin Nunes off the bench with the winner. Sorry, lads, but no way Liverpool lose here. If they do, then I will dunk five buckets of Pepsi over my head. Tottenham 3, Crystal Palace 0. Look, I think that Oliver Glass there will have a nice stable. New manager bounces Sellers Park. To me, he is that type of nothing special, perfectly average, very forgettable brand of safe, boring boss. Someone who will be fine at Palace. He'll be what Claude Puel was at Leicester City. Uh, anyone remember his stint? Probably not. You probably haven't even thought about him in a solid five years. In the same way, I don't think anybody has ever bothered to remember anything that ever happened on Homes Under the Hammer. It's usually just something you watch on mute in the dentist waiting room. So I think Glasner will be fine, but I'm sorry. Palace have lost the last four games against Spurs. They have a pretty woeful record against them, and I reckon this match will be finished in the first half. Someone like Mark Gehi will be sent off, and then suddenly, trying to stop Postacoglu Ball with ten men. Oh, good luck. Goals from James Madison, Son and Mint, and Richardson. The end. And lads, if Spurs don't win, then I will buy a Captain Underpants book and lick every single page. Luton Town 1, Aston Villa 3. Oh, Luton Town. It only feels like five minutes ago. They were flying high, battering in four goals each against Brighton and Newcastle. Now they've since lost to the league's worst club. Oh yeah, and let Erling Haaland easily score five on their own patch. Oh, Tim Kroll, what happened to you? Yes, Haaland is a world great, but you did show the reflexes of a chocolate teapot. But listen, Villa beat Luton 3-1 earlier on in the season. I reckon it'll be a repeat. Goals from Ollie Watkins, Leon Bailey and Morgan Rogers. First is a late consolation goal from the informed Jordan Clark. But I'm sorry, Rob Edwards. I know he began his playing days at Villa Park and will be desperate to get one over the club who never really believed in him. But sorry, Villa are going to eat you with a knife and fork. And if they don't, if Villa don't win here, then I will send a really creepy tweet to Thogden. Burnley nil, Bournemouth 3. Oh, come on. Burnley have zero chance here. Yes, the Vincent Company has something about him as a manager. But coming up against Anoni Iriola, he's going to be outclassed, outwitted, and destroyed with ease. Lads, I know Bournemouth lost 4-2 at home to Burnley a year ago. But that was a very different Bournemouth. Back when they had an uninspiring sock puppet at the wheel? No, this Bournemouth will absolutely flatten the Clarets. Goals from Antoine Semenyo, Justin Cliver, and Dominic Solanke. This is going to be another horrible afternoon for Company. I actually feel kind of sad for him. The punishment just does not end every single week. His ideas, his game plan, his tactical philosophy gets absolutely eroded and just grilled like a steak sandwich. Oh, poor Vinny. What a humbling season this is. But yeah, Iriola is going to destroy you. Man City 5, Man United 1. Look, I know that Manchester fans will not like this, but is this result really all that surprising? Look, it is quite fitting that this fixture is happening this weekend, considering um this fixture arguably gave Paul Pogba his finest ever moment in club football. You know, when he scored two goals at the Eddie had to turn a 2-0 defeat into a 3-2 Man United win? I mean, if Manchester United had lost that match, they'd have had to watch Man City be crowned Premier League champions. That would have been one of the worst moments in this club's entire history. Letting their noisy neighbors beat them to clinch another title? It would have arguably been more painful than the Aguero moment. So honestly, give Paul Pogba his roses for that match. But as for this one, oh, I mean, it, I know it feels like a thousand light years ago, but on Man United's last trip to the Etihad, you did concede six. Eric Ten Hag was helplessly watching from the sidelines as two different City players scored a hat-trick in that match in a City derby. That's almost as embarrassing as a 7-0. A Manchester City player scoring a treble against United should be a once in a 25 years sort of thing, not twice in a match. Before that, United lost 4-1 at the Etihad. So this really isn't that grisly of a prediction at all. I'm sorry, but there's a huge gulf in class between these two teams. And this, 
this is gonna be the evening where Ten Hag is fully slaughtered on the internet. This is the weekend where the punditry really starts to turn on him. I mean, come on. Haaland has just warmed up for this derby by scoring five. That is scary. I think he'll bag two. And also goals from Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, and Julian Alvarez. Versus a consolation strike from Marcus Rashford. But honestly, it is going to be horrible. And lads, if Manchester United lose by less than three goals, then I will slap myself in the face with five separate salmons. Sheffield United nil, Arsenal four. I would love, love to see anybody trying to tip a Sheffield United win here. Do you think there is a single person alive on the planet who actually thinks that will be the case? Yeah, I know. It's not that long ago that Arsenal lost here, but they've come a long way since October 2019, getting beat up on the ground like Bramall Lane. It was typical of their weak, pitiful side back then, when they were captained by Obama Yan. Someone who looks like he would cry if he got his hair wet. Someone who just casually strolled through games, probably daydreaming about his next Lamborghini. Again, a quality player, but at times... He was just a smiley Pogba. But yeah, sorry, Sheffield, but you lose 4 0. The Arsenal goal scoring machine strolls on. Die Havertz with one, and Gabriel Martinelli with three. Sorry, lads, but Arsenal are in scary form. And if you don't believe me, if they don't win, then I will get a stranger to throw 100 tennis balls at my head. Ah, oh, that'll hurt. Anyway, that's the end of it. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think is going to happen in the games this weekend? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, subscribe, as always. I'll talk to you in a while.